In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Drive Talk Cars. If this is your first time checking out the channel and you want to know more about DIYs, mods, and other car related activities, start now by clicking that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on anything. All right, so I'm going to clean the engine bay today. Um, there was a few comments left uh, regarding how dirty my engine bay and I appreciate your comments. And yes, it is quite dirty. I thought I would do this video to show you how I'm going to go about cleaning out my engine bay. My goal is not to use a lot of water, um, not to cover a lot of things, just kind of use just enough water to affect the area, clean it and wipe it down. But let's jump into the tools that I'm going to be using to perform this task. All right, so first thing you're gonna need is something to clean the engine bay. So of course we can use water and um, dish detergent or some type of dish soap, preferably one that has some kind of degreaser agent in it. This is if you don't have a degreaser. If you do have a degreaser, then you can go ahead and use that in the place of the soap and water or both. All right, so next you're gonna need something to agitate the dirt. I'm gonna use a painter's brush, uh, nothing fancy. Um, I got it because it has a long handle, but you can use detail brush sets or any other type of brush that you have. All right, and you're gonna need a steel bristle brush or you could actually use a Dremel. Um, I have one of those too. If this one doesn't pan out, then I'm gonna use a Dremel with a wire brush adapter. And this is to get the corrosion off of the aluminum or any type of metal surfaces. You're gonna need microfiber cloth towels or some type of paper towel to wipe up the area as you are wiping it down with the degreaser or soapy water. Then I have a vacuum, a shop vac, to vacuum up any loose dirt that is on any of the parts on the engine bay. And then I have a air compressor. Uh, you can use this to free up any loose dirt that may be stuck between crevices that you can't really vacuum out. Maybe you can use the air compressor to blow out the dirt. Uh, but these are the tools I'm gonna use to clean my engine bay. Uh, you can do any other type of tools, but this is what I have. So let's get started. All right, so when dealing with anything regarding your engine and water, please make sure to disconnect the battery. Um, there's a lot of electric components on your engine and you don't want to get them wet and you don't want any current running through them to where you can short them out or hurt yourself or any of that. So please disconnect your battery. That is very important if your battery is in the engine bay. Thankfully for me on the Maserati, it is in the trunk, but I'm still gonna disconnect it just to ensure there's no current running through any of the engine components. All right, so if you do have a Maserati Ghibli, the battery is in the trunk. It has a cover, you take that and move it over, and then you have your battery. Just push this red button in, and then your positive terminal comes off, and your battery is disconnected. All right, so now that we have disconnected the battery, we can go ahead and proceed on to the front of the car. All right, so as you can see, the engine bay is pretty dirty. Dirt on the main cover, air box, the reservoirs, and around on your struts and around. So we're gonna be clearing off all of this. First, we're gonna start by taking off the main cover. All right, so what you wanna do is assess what parts you can take off. I don't suggest taking off the air boxes, but if you had any type of covering here or anything else, you would take that off. For this particular vehicle, we're just gonna take off this main cover and that should be just about it. And then we can just wipe down everything else. So let's get started. Okay, so like a lot of modern cars now, you have a main engine cover. This one just pops in. So it's pretty easy to take off. So we're gonna just take this and we're gonna put it to the side to clean separately. All right, so now with everything exposed, you can kind of see the corrosion on the valve cover. Um, you can see the buildup of oil around the engine oil cap, some on the manifold, and just dirt around different components. 
So as you notice, there's some loose dust. What we're gonna do first is use the vacuum cleaner to try to get any loose particles we can get before adding liquid. I'm gonna take my shop vac and vacuum around. And if that doesn't do anything, then I'm gonna use the air compressor. All right, since the vacuum didn't work, we're gonna try the air compressor. Just use a little attachment to blow air. Uh, and let's see what that does. All right, so we're just gonna use some normal soap. Well, not normal soap, but dish soap and some water, that eh, should be enough. And we're just gonna mix it up, have some soapy water here. All right, so let's get started. All right, get your cloths. So we're just gonna do little areas at a time. Then we're gonna dry them off before they dry. That way we can have the soap and the water mixture without it drying up. Just irritating. Ag irritating or agitating? Agitating all the areas. This is why the brush is good, because you can get into stuff. And the long candle helps because you can get down into the nicks and crannies and not have to scrape up your fingers. All right, so we're just gonna get down in those cracks, not putting too much water and not going too far out. So I'm just gonna do this little portion here. And you wanna get soap on everything. Well not in electronic parts, but that's why we're using the brush and the soapy water. But you wanna to touch all the little corners. Don't forget the frame. All right, so let's wipe this little area here. So you can already see it's night and day. So essentially, this is what we're gonna do all the way through the engine. So I'm gonna try the degreaser. Let's just see if that's easier. Another tip is, which may be obvious, um, you want to do this when the engine is not hot. One, it's going to be very dangerous to be around a hot engine. Two, you don't want any cold water to interact with the hot water because usually when things go from hot to cold very fast, bad things happen. We don't want to have an engine that is hot. So as you can see, things are already looking better. As you can see, we're not using a lot of water, um, so it's okay on a lot of the things that's under the hood. And a lot of the things under the hood are capable of being wet, but a lot of things you don't want to soak or have a lot of water go down into it. So using this method is, to me, beneficial and safe. All right, so I used the wire brush on this part here, and it's getting it pretty clean, but it's taking a long time. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the Dremel. And I have a wire brush bit on here, so that should do the trick. All right, so as you can see, there is the oxidized version, and then here is the clean version. It's a rough draft, I'm not done yet, but you can see the difference between the two. All right, so let's keep going. Keeping it on a low setting because it's a little bit more forgiving than when you have it on high. I don't want to slice through any holes or anything like that. All 
right, so usually around your oil cap is definitely a frequently used spot and you have oil buildup and different things. So we're gonna spray this down with the greaser. Use the brush to agitate. Now you don't wanna get any water down in there, so do not put a lot of water. What I might do is just get a paper towel and wipe that down. All right, so wipe away from the hole. Don't want any dirt and all that to go down into your engine. So I might have to move this hole so I can um, get more of the dirt up under there. So you want to put it everywhere that you can see very common used areas of things like dipstick. Those little things will matter when you're all said and done. Hoses, coral packs, connectors. You don't want to have a lot of water on your brush, but just enough to where you can kind of get the surface where it won't be seeping down into the um, connector. Cause they do have a, some barrier for water, but you just can't drench stuff. You'll start to see that the little colors on the things like the clips here, little colors will start to pop out because they're clean again. And that really makes your engine bay look uh, pretty good there. So as you see, label came off. So you will have to be careful with that if it's an important label to not put too much water to where your stickers come off. But that will probably come off with heat as well and over time. So it's not like it's a deal breaker, but if you want to keep your labels, don't get them wet. Make sure you don't forget to do the hood. A lot of times we neglect to look up. Now sometimes on older cars, the roof paneling here is old and shrinking and coming apart. So I wouldn't advise washing that. Uh, this is fairly new and look in good shape. So you could wash it if you want to. I'm not washing it, it doesn't look to be very dirty. So I'm just getting the outside of the hood here. Getting the back here. So the cleaning part is done. All right, so let's not forget about our main cover here. This is what you see the most when you look in the engine bay. So we wanna get this nice and clean. All right. All right, so that's looking good. So now that the engine is nice and clean, We've cleaned everything, wiped it down, polished as best as we could the aluminum valve covers and the hoses. So now what we're gonna do is apply the product by Chemical Guys called Black on Black. Um, it's safe for the engine, other trim, other black things. So we're gonna apply this and then that is the last step. Alright, so let's put on the cover. Alright, we're gonna give it one final wipe down, just get fingerprints before we spray the sealant.
All right, guys. So there you have it. Um, I thank you for the comments to say clean out your engine bay. It was much overdue. And if you haven't subscribed already, please click that subscription button down below as well as the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on anything. And until next time, I'm out.